What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the wood shop. Sorry, it's been a little while since we've posted. My family and I went on a trip to go visit my wife's family on the East Coast. Kelly, our filmer, ended up getting sick before we left. It's been a couple weeks, but we're stoked to be back in action and getting you caught back up to speed on what we've been working on here in the shop. We're just about finished with the timber frame pergola project. We moved a few pieces of furniture out of the shop. So as I was getting everything kind of cleaned up and reorganized for this next round of projects, I figured it was a perfect time to do a shop tour. Come check it out. What's going on everybody? Well, this is our building that we have named the Escalonia. It was originally constructed in 1939 and was the original city hall of Lincoln City. We're just a couple blocks off the beach. Come on down, let's go check out the shop. Alrighty, so the back door of our shop enters right into what we call the wood room. And obviously the name is indicative of what's in here. This place is stacked up higher than, you know, taller than I am with all of the slabs that we've been milling over the last couple of years. We have a lot of maple, we got redwood, we have some other hardwoods. We also have some just general wood storage in the back here that's just here drying, air drying with uh, some air circulation getting ready for us to be able to work with it. We come in the shop through the wood room right into the bulk of our wood processing. We have our saw stop cabinet table saw with our full size 4x8 outfeed table. It's super essential to have a full size outfeed table specifically because we cut a lot of long pieces of material. And as you might know, if you're working in a confined space, whether it's in your garage at home or a basement or whatever your setup is, it's super tough to not have an outfeed table. So we feel for you guys. We were there at one point before getting to where we are right now. Coming around the corner here, we have the rest of our rough processing equipment all kind of clustered into the same place. We have our Powermatic seven, or sorry, six inch joiner, and we have our Powermatic 20 inch planer. This we actually just converted and upgraded recently to the helical blade. I wish we had been posting YouTube videos uh, at that point. We did it about a year ago, but the conversion from the straight knives to the helical blade uh, was absolutely a game changer for us. It uh, quiets the machine down a whole bunch. It just it makes it way quieter, and the cut is way more efficient and way cleaner with that helical blade attachment. Um, if you guys are considering that and on the fence, do it. Don't wait any longer. Converting this to the helical blade was the best thing that we ever did. Coming back behind us here is our rolling chop saw station. Again, this is another station that I wish we were posting YouTube videos about because this build was awesome. I hid a solid metal frame inside the base of this rolling chop saw station, so there is no flex and no twist in the whole thing. We got casters that have a heavy load capacity. I think each one is about 750 pound capacity. So this can actually be rolled and moved around the shop as needed, but usually it stays right here. We have just a very simple, very rudimentary plywood dust shroud connected to our old dust collection system and now this is pretty much dedicated to just the chop saw dust you guys as you might know dust collection systems are so essential for both the cleanliness of the shop but also your health if you're not collecting the dust and it's just floating around in the air you guys it's not good to be breathing in for long periods of time over here we have just general off-cut scrap wood storage, a lot of which is just coming off the chop saw. Our small delta lathe, which you have seen us use in our chisel restoration video and a few other things. 
And as we come around the corner here, we have our large old school Delta Rockwell bandsaw. Right now it's out of commission, however, we're just putting new tires on this bandsaw, the flywheels, and we need a new blade and a couple new parts. However, this will be back up and running shortly. Around the corner here, we have our Woodmaster 50 inch dual drum sander. This was one of the most recent additions to the shop coming in about two years ago. And this has just made us feel crazy spoiled when it comes to sanding and surfacing all of our wood pieces. It fits a whole dining table top inside of it, doors, anything, you name it, small, large, we send through this drum sander to surface it. If you guys haven't caught it yet, there is a video on our channel where I review the Woodmaster 50. If it's something that you guys are looking at, whether it's the 50 inch dual drum sander or one of Woodmaster's smaller drum sanders, you might wanna go check that video out because that review will pretty much apply to all of them. Against the north wall of our shop, we have our full length metal storage. This holds all of the raw stock material for our metal fabrication processes like our round tube, our square tube, rectangular tubing, solid rod. And right in front of the rack, we have several mobile roller bases that allow us to lift a piece of material off the rack and slide it right into our jet metal cutting bandsaw. This allows us to process full length pieces of material, whether we're building custom gates or fencing or doing custom fabrication, making a, a unique metal base for a piece of furniture that we're working on. We have a dedicated metal drill press. This is used all the time, obviously, for cutting hole patterns. We use it a ton for our stainless steel railings, and it's something that we are, you know, obviously using only with metal. We keep it away from the wood stuff. Here we have our full-size jet dust collection system that is plumbed to the majority of our woodworking equipment. We have, obviously, the large eight-inch pipe that runs reduced down to the dual drum sander. And then we have another eight inch pipe running to kind of the cluster of tools that's over there, both our planer, our joiner, and our table saw. It does a really good job at keeping the dust out of these tools. It doesn't eliminate all of it, but it does a really good job. And after finally spending the time and money to plumb everything in, it's made it really nice and clean and super convenient to use, especially because Jet has a remote control on and off switch. So one of the first things that we do in the morning is I go and find that wherever I left it the previous day, throw it in my pocket, and whenever I'm walking around working on stuff, I just click it on, it turns on, when I'm done with it, click it right back off, and I keep working. Last but not least, coming around the corner of the shop leads us into our metal fabrication bay. This is definitely the smallest compartment of the shop. Don't let it fool you, we pump out a ton of custom metal fabrication out of just this little area. We have a four foot by four foot metal fab table that we fabricated out of an old road plate. This is half inch thickness and it's really nice to have a solid steel fabrication table, both for clamping, you can tack jigs to it, you can hammer stuff against it, you can set red hot stuff on it, and it's not gonna move. We have our Miller 252, which we do the majority of our metal fabrication with, specifically if it's mild steel. It's a MIG welder, awesome welder. We've had it for several years, and it's just done super well for us. We also have one of the ESOB EMP 215 IC Rebels, which I use as our lift arc TIG welder in the shop here. I also take this machine out on site with us because it's so light and it's so convenient to use. It literally goes in the back seat of the truck or into the trailer or in the truck bed, comes out on site with us when we're doing different stuff. We got our shop air compressor there and the rest of this is just kind of a horrid mess right now, but we're working on getting through everything and cleaning it out. We have just a couple random pieces that are in progress right now our tapping station, our cheapo kind of hokey little milling machine that I can drill out and auger out slots in metal with and do a little bit of very light machine work, our workbench, 
a beautiful vise that was my grandfather's and I'm just stoked to have this in the shop. As you can see here, we have our anvil here on our anvil stand, our forge over across the way. When we're setting up for blacksmithing like you might have seen in the Japanese marking knife video, we open up the garage door, we put the forge right kind of in the opening of the garage door, slide the anvil out in the middle, and then we're hammering on steel. Let's come back in here. And there's just a couple last little bit of things that I wanted to talk over. We scored this beautiful handmade workbench, actually from a storage unit that a friend of mine manages. This was built by a local craftsman who unfortunately last year passed away. His wife didn't know what to do with all the stuff in the storage unit, and so they started to try to find people that would put his equipment to good use. I feel super lucky and really fortunate to have gotten this workbench from him, as I've been planning on building a workbench of my own for the last little while, but as you might know how it goes, being so busy building other people's things makes it really hard to get enough time to build your own stuff. So for right now, I'm super ecstatic to have this workbench. It has three vices, tons of storage room down below. It has all of these hardy holes for clamping stuff too. It's made out of white oak with what looks like a walnut surround and then these beautiful vices on here. Guys, this is kind of just how we have set up our workshop. Both with, you know, keeping in mind the actual physical limitations we have down here in this third, or in this lower level of our building here, we have these posts. So when I was laying out the shop originally, we had to kind of work within the posts, figuring out how we could process as long of pieces material without running into these poles. We also set it up in these clusters because it just makes sense in my brain of how we process material. Long stuff comes in through the door and usually goes right through the table saw, trimming it to a rough width. Then goes over to the chop saw, cutting our lengths, and then through the planer to get our thickness. We then hone it down with our joiner, usually back into the table saw, and then back around the circle as we're kind of finishing and getting closer to how that piece of material is gonna be used. I hope you guys learned something here. This has definitely been a work in progress and as we grow and replace uh, old tools with newer, bigger equipment, it's just like this constant changing uh, thing down here of finding the best way to set the shop up. You guys have any comments? have any ideas that how oh, I could be doing something better if you guys learned something if you guys got inspired by anything you know I want to let you know we started Schooner Creek Designs in a 400 square foot boathouse okay so it can be done if you're working in a small garage if you're working in a backyard shed if you have to roll your stuff out on your driveway just keep going if this is something that you want to be doing for a profession it's totally possible and I know that because if I can do it I guarantee you anybody can do it we went from our boathouse to a small shop now to this shop over a seven or eight year period of time you know, and we're so fortunate to be in here. You guys, if you learned anything or were inspired by anything you guys saw here, please hit that like and subscribe button. We're really hoping to grow this channel with you, and we're looking forward to keep on posting these videos about the projects we're doing. All right, that's it for the shop tour. We'll see you guys on the next one.